Hi, everyone. You're going to notice a lovely new uh, tool that I have here to help me out. I listened to your feedback with great intent. And one of the key pieces of feedback was, we love the videos. We're having a lot of fun learning together, but the sound quality is horrible. So can you do something? Well, I saved my money and I got a better headset with a better microphone. And hopefully this will improve things. Glad to have you back on this journey together. And this week, it's it's currently September 2021, and we are in the midst of the United Nations Food Systems Summit, and leaders from around the world, and not not just not just fancy political leaders, but leaders in so many different shapes and forms, including many community leaders, many youth leaders, many organizational leaders, and grassroots uh, community developers are all coming together. Approximately 40,000 of us have contributed in some way way, shape, or form to all of these different systems dialogues that are occurring. And it's been really exciting to interact with so many amazing people through this process and find those synergies of how we can work together better as a food community. And I don't just mean food industry, but a food community. Consumers are part of that. Educators are part of that. The industry is part of that. Uh, non-governmental organizations all have a role to play in terms of developing the food system that we want and the food system that's going to create sustainability for our world. And so it's been so exciting. And I want to take a little bit of time just to reflect on what I'm observing and uh, some of the activities that they're encouraging all of us to think about as we go through our own process of preparing for the decade of action, as the United Nations is calling it, that we they want us to all act on food as a primary issue and find our niche in that. So I'm going to jump over to my PowerPoint and we'll see you there. So food systems and the sustainable development goals. Well, it just happened that back at the... Uh, Around the year 2000, there were previously these different goals set up by the United Nations, and they had what they called Millennial Development Goals for the year 2000. Now, at, at, at the year 2000, they set up what they um, called the Sustainable Development Goals, and the idea being, how do we integrate all of these sustainability targets so that we have a world that's worth living in? And many of these sustainable development goals really strongly relate to food systems. And the, uh, the United Nations Food Systems Summit encouraged us to all do a reflection activity where we think through each of those sustainable development goals that relate to food and think strategically about the impact and how we as different leaders within different contexts can respond to those. So at the end of this video, you will be able to reflect on your role as a food professional in making positive impacts for the environment, health and livelihoods through food systems. You'll review the 17 sustainable development goals for 2030 and discuss their impact. And you'll appreciate the impact of the UN Food Systems Summit in 2021 on future industry trends. So let's just jump in here. The United Nations Food Systems Summit, as I mentioned, has attracted leaders from around the world. There is a physical summit going on with a few of the leaders in New York and a few of the leaders in Rome. And most of it's virtual. And that virtual inflection point that was driven by the global pandemic means that they were able to bring in thousands more participants that they normally would be able to do. And that in its own right, that aspect of global connectivity and that we're able to reach out and talk immediately to one another, no matter um, almost anywhere in the world. Now, inevitably, there are people who are still not part of the te uh, technological revolution, either um, because of poverty and lack of infrastructure uh, preventing them from participation, or in some cases from choice. But in general, we're able to reach out to uh, communities of leadership, communities that have these resources, and quickly share our ideas and share our synergies, share resources with one another, and and be able to get to our goals collectively together faster. That aspect of collective action and working together and finding our mutual uh, 
our mutual purpose, our singular purpose, using uh, Deming's uh, terminology, that singular purpose of, of our organization allows us to do that collective action. So everyone coming together and through discussion, dialogue, and communication, we're able to figure out what is that strategic vision and what is that singular purpose so that as we're doing our own things, we can always go back to that singular purpose as that touchstone. So collective action and grassroots organizing has been absolutely critical to the United Nations Food Systems Summit. And the fact that more than 40,000 participants had a role to play is a testament to that. So as I mentioned in the previous uh, slideshow that we were talking about innovation practice, we were talking about that aspect of hope. Oftentimes people go into these UN meetings and they're like, well, everyone is so hopeful and um, optimistic, but when do we go into action? And we talked in the previous uh, slideshow where we talked about how we can often be in a passive role of hope, hope that something's going to happen, like wishing on a birthday cake versus the hope to. And hope to um, is a very active voice that we hope to do something. And that doing and that action value system is really critical to what is being presented in the UN Food System Summit this time around, that every one of us has a part to play. Everyone has something that they need to do. What that is, though, may reflect back on your own interests, your own professional background, your own um, your own community context as well. And that hope to do things needs to be really driven by that that contextual basis. But the fact is we all need to act in some way, big or small. So let's, oh, this is a screenshot from this afternoon where um, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, was giving um, his statement about the event. And it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty inspiring because one of the key messages that keeps coming over and over again, action is driven by youth. And youth is a really critical piece in this, that with a future forward action agenda, you need to engage young people in that process. And the the message of young people as leaders is really important. Um, something I was reflecting on earlier as I'm preparing for my own uh, presentation, not at the actual Food System Summit, but there's so many spin-off side meetings that are occurring as part of the uh, pre- and post-summit events. And I'm at one of those um, leading a presentation on education systems. Education systems is it is a life. It is a lifetime of learning, but much of that learning happens during childhood and youth. And so, I was really resonating with the messages of youth as the future. And we have that opportunity in education to change people's trajectories and be able to teach them new things in a way that becomes meaningful as they move towards adulthood and towards those leadership um, roles that they'll take in their community. Now. As part of the summit, many of us committed to doing a reflection on a counting down to the summit. And I started it. And then as I prepared my presentation, I'm like, oh, no, I missed a day. I missed another day. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to do my countdown summit or countdown to the summit right now for you. So a sustainable development goal 17 just happens to be called partnerships for the goals. And this is where you're creating sustainable food systems, but it requires collaboration, innovation, and partnerships. And um, I know that it's really important in my own work that I am constantly reaching out. Something that we talk about when we're doing problem solving and learning practice for problem solving is that aspect of seeking knowledge as part of the uh, as part of the problem solving cycle. Where do you seek knowledge? Well, oftentimes you seek knowledge in those traditional things like books and um, learning from journal articles or or so on. But partnership is part of that knowing who are quality people in your community, who are those experts that you can call on, that is really vital. And being able to build networks of, of, of interrelated points of knowledge is how you solve problems. And so partnerships is absolutely critical. 16 is peace, justice, and strong institutions. And what we know is that many global conflicts in, in history have being related to lack of resources, lack of food, lack of access to land to grow food. These have all been 
key features of many historical conflicts. And right now we are seeing the ravages of global warming on much of our land. Is this going to cause insecurity both within uh, political systems as well as food insecurity? So we do need to be really cognizant of our role as peacemakers when we're thinking about um, all of the food systems that we're working on. 15 is life on land and that a lot of agriculture is neutral or potentially positive if we're maintaining the land. But in other roles, agriculture has been one of the biggest influences on deforestation. And the fact that we are, in some cases, we're taking our good agricultural land and we're rolling it under housing developments and under, um, to use a, a line from a Canadian, a very famous Canadian song, we paved the paradise and we put up a parking lot. Um, the fact that we are covering up our best land and making it inaccessible for agriculture. And then because we've done that, we now have to go and take less quality land and convert that over by burning down forests, by converting those uh, important carbon sinks for global warming into agricultural land. That, that in its own right is very devastating on the environment. And so we do need to be aware of how we're uh, maintaining our agricultural systems so that we are um, protecting the environment as much as possible. Water systems are also really critical and Sustainable Development Goal 14 speaks about life below water. Sustainable food systems are really important that um, we have a lot of fisheries that are reliant on the quality of water. Water in its own right is essential for agriculture and being able to access quality water for irrigation is important. Agriculture, though, contributes to much of the pollution that occurs. I live in the Great Lakes Basin, and much of the pollution that we see in the Great Lakes is due to agricultural runoffs causing algae blooms and toxic uh, bacteria growth in the water system. And then that can impact on uh, cities being able to access bulk water from the lakes for drinking water. These all are interconnected, and it's really important for us to think about those interconnections and how one might interplay into the other. Uh, climate action. Uh, food systems contribute a great percentage of the greenhouse gas emissions that occur in our environment. And part of that is related to animal agriculture. I know in, in the chemistry class that we've been uh, doing a unit on uh, protein modification. And there's there's great intent behind that because we need to think about how we're getting our protein. Animal agriculture contributes greatly to the greenhouse gas emissions that are occurring in our environment. And if we can eat at a better trophic level by um, improving the efficiency of our, of our food systems by not losing all that energy and metabolism, but instead eating the energy directly by eating more plants, we may be doing better in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. But we have to couple that with the fact that are we eating local in terms of those plant-based foods? Or are we just adding greenhouse gas by shuffling protein isolates from one country to the other and across the ocean multiple times? Now, sustainable food systems need to uh, are really critical. So Sustainable Development Goal 12 is about responsible consumption and production. And as uh, food manufacturing leaders, we are often thinking about key decisions, about supply chains, and about um, the different inputs that we're using in our products. Are we choosing more environmentally sustainable packaging materials? How much waste are we creating in our operations? Um, within our supply chain, are we running thousands upon thousands of kilometers for food inputs, or are we thinking about the environmental impact of that? We do need to make sure that we're empowering consumers to make better food choices. And, and part of this is also through total cost accounting, where we are accounting not only just for the cost of goods on food products, but we're also thinking about the the total cost accounting. What is the impact on human life, on environment, on animal welfare, on uh, long-term impacts on the environment. We need to start accounting for all of this and empower consumers as part of that so that they can make better food choices and, and therefore drive the needs of the industry. Sustainable Development Goal 11 is about sustainable cities and communities. And, and cities have become islands, uh, oftentimes isolated from food systems. And in order to have the appropriate resilience, we need to think about cities and um, 
urban centers, towns, and so on as essential parts of food production. Cities are often where food manufacturing is occurring, but could we be bringing some of those value chain or uh, value chains closer to the city, um, both by protecting the farmland surrounding cities, but also by thinking about urban agriculture as an important local element to the economy. Most urban agriculture uh, environments are small scale, but they can have a really uh, impressive impact when done small scale, repeated in uh, well strategic locations that impact on the food security and the food access for people. So cities are an evolving essential part of how we're maintaining agricultural systems. Sustainable Development Goal 10 is about reduced inequality and food is often that first thing that gets impacted when people do not have good income. Um, inequality is shown quite often by decent work as well. And the food industry is notorious um, in that we undervalue the role of workers and the role of the human input into our food products. Uh, oftentimes, uh, food, food jobs are seen as lesser than when, meanwhile, I, I personally know that the food jobs should be paying well enough that people can have decent work and be able to live off of the proceeds of working in the food industry. And that comes from us as a, as a society, understanding that food is value and value comes from um, both the value of the food itself, but the human inputs and the work that provided that food. Nine is a favorite of mine because it talks about industry innovation and infrastructure and uh, food, food systems need to invest in innovation. And one of the calls that has been uh, repeated numerous times during the uh, Food System Summit has been that governments should be investing in agri-food research because food is a common good. It is our life. If we do not have food and we are not able to be resilient in our food systems, our humanity will collapse. And so we need to invest in innovation as part of that. And Innovation, not just because we're following the next trend and the next fad, but innovation that makes impact on benefiting people and the planet. So when we're doing those innovations, are we truly thinking about reducing those uh, greenhouse gas emissions, reducing the amount of, of suffering that may be occurring on a human level or on an environmental level or on an animal uh, welfare level? These are all really important things to be mindful about. Eight is another one that I care a lot about. It's about decent work and economic growth. And again, food systems that are sustainable advance decent work by creating jobs that are uh, meaningful to people and that people are able to live off, off of the income that they can uh, as they're participating in agriculture. And when people are able to have a decent life, that causes economic growth. People are able to spend, people are able to get decent housing, people are able to um, spin off uh, all sorts of different tangible benefits within the economy by having sustainability built in. Number seven is about affordable and clean energy. And the reflection on this exercise indicated that there are still many hundreds of millions of people who do not have access to a reliable clean energy. Clean energy is important as part of a sustainable food system. A lot of, a lot of the sustainability and uh, lost, uh, lost input within these systems comes from the fact that a lot of the world does not have really industrialized um, food distribution chains. The simple act of having refrigeration or a way of cooling foods to extend its shelf life by several days is extremely meaningful. Having energy that's clean and reliable to be able to do appropriate food preservation is another key feature. And having those clean energy inputs is a game changer in terms of shelf life and uh, product stability. And it's also a game changer when, when, when farmers are able to convert food products into stable food, uh, into stable consumer packaged goods, they're extending the shelf life, they're extending their value chain, and they're extending their opportunity to create value in those foods. So 
affordable energy, while it may seem a little bit tangential, is absolutely critical here. Number six, again, clean water and sanitation. We talked about life in the water, but it's totally linked to six, that water is drastically impacted by agricultural um, and agri-food activities. And many of those activities actively pollute the water system. We need to make sure that we have access to clean water as a human right. Gender equality is also really critical. Women are in virtually all food economies, the, the, the de facto workers, but we do not see quite as many women as leaders in the food system. And having those, those um, important voices that are empowering other people in the process. And so making sure that we include women as leaders is really important. The Conversely, including men as providers and caregivers as part of food systems is also important. That we're not just women cooking in the kitchen and feeding our children, but everyone has a role to play in terms of feeding one another. And that includes men feeding children, men participating in shopping, and every one of us taking an active role in that aspect of equality within food systems. Quality education, this is the one that resonates with me uh, the most in that food systems provide nutrition that children need to succeed in school. That yes, in order to succeed in school, people need to have a standard of health and wellness. And they say that a full belly will help you learn in school. And there is a big emphasis on school feeding programs. One of the activities that we've been doing with our reflections on the summit is thinking about food systems education itself and that everyone should know how to participate in food systems. And that comes with quality education. These are not just learned behaviors and these are not just things that you would learn at um, tertiary education like college or university. These should be things that you learn as a child and learn as an adolescent. And that is something that quality education can deliver by integrating food systems learning right into the classroom. And that, I think, is a, just as important as providing school lunches, being able to help people learn about food systems so that they are uh, productive participants in it is important. And that can be done with children. Food is health and well-being. And this, there's so much information about how food both contributes importantly um, to reducing malnutrition. There are still almost a billion people who are undernourished in this world. And conversely, there are more than 2 billion people who are overnourished and experiencing the ill effects of many chronic diseases that are caused by poor diet, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, hypertension. Many of these are directly impacted by poor diet and it's such a paradox that we have both the opportunity to heal people with food and the opportunity to kill people. And that, again, is also a learned behavior, so much related to education. And so healthy food system saves lives. Zero hunger, again, the sustainable development goals are really about um, reducing the amount of poverty in our world. And we still have a lot of areas of poverty, even here within Canada. Hunger is a, a key. Um, we just had a national election just this this earlier this week. And poverty reduction is still absolutely critical. As we are going through global crises like COVID, we are seeing more and more people falling through the cracks. And making sure that we have sustainable food systems to feed everyone is absolutely critical. How do we make sure that everything that we're doing, we are still ensuring that there's equity out there so that everyone can be fed at the end of the day. Last but not least, poverty reduction is absolutely critical. We, Through food systems, we are improving people's health. We are improving people's livelihoods. We are improving the environment so that people can continue to innovate and find opportunity for themselves. And so finding ways of reducing poverty is going to help improve the world. And all of these knit together in such a, uh, I want to say, a wonderful interconnected web of, of ideas and opportunities. But 
in the end, really our, our core goal for everyone is we want everyone to have the opportunity to live a healthy life, have joy, have happiness. And when we are able to lift people from poverty, that's a really important part of that process. So as I mentioned, I've been part of the Thought for Food or TFF um, Food Systems Game Changers Lab, and it's been a really exciting process. We've spent the better part of this, uh, the late spring and summer working together on collective action and grassroots organizing, and then working together towards global goals, how we could act together. And we're really excited. Um, we are going to be part of the Action Agenda Assembly on the 27th. And so that's been... Um, very, very exciting for myself and all of my colleagues. And it again, I want to extend my gratitude to TFF and all of the different sponsors, the Rockefeller Foundation, IDEO, the EAT Foundation. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something in this process, but there have been so many amazing synergies that have come from that process. And I'm really gra uh, grateful for the learning that I had about um, organizing collective action and grassroots um, organizational management in that process. Again, we spent a lot of time talking about youth and children as really important uh, structures of leadership for making sure that the change that we want occurs within our world. So last but not least, uh, you know me, I'm going to leave you with some ideas to think about because yes, this is linked to some of, uh, some of my courses. But uh, Oftentimes, when we were having those conversations with the TFF cohort, they were like, it's, there's just so much going on. How on earth do we continue doing all of this? And the big thing is that we as a, as a community, everyone has a role to play. And it could be small steps. It could be big steps. But if you were to start making small steps towards some of those sustainable development goals. I know there were 17 there, but perhaps you resonate with one of them and can make some small action that's going to accumulate towards that greater good when everyone works together. Yes, we also need the systems change at the government and industrial levels where large actors make big changes. But when we are all working together with that same singular purpose that everyone should be participating in food systems. Everyone should do so mindfully and do so with the intent of improving the planet, improving livelihoods and improving health. Then we are able to have that singular purpose as a, hum as a, as, as a humanity together. So think about it. Where do you see yourself? Which, which, of these, which of these sustainable development goals really impacted you when you were reflecting on it as we went down that countdown? Um, how how might it impact on what you want to learn and how you want to um, proceed with your career development? I, I was mentioning how in this innovation class that I'm teaching and, and, and how I'm linking this lecture to uh, my coursework, oftentimes we have students coming close to graduation and they realize, you know what, I really enjoyed learning about product development. I really enjoyed learning about food safety, but I now realize there's so much more to food systems and I need to keep on learning. Can we find you those partnerships with other schools? Can we find you partnerships with other courses that you could be taking to continue your learning journey so that you can become the effective leader that you need to be to help with these changes? Now, sometimes you feel like doing things is going to help making things better. Sometimes you feel like not doing things makes things worse. It's so easy to feel like I, it's just so big, I can't do anything. Uh, that was another key feature of our conversation that we had in our chemistry class yesterday. We talked about the sustainable development goals in, in the chemistry class as, a, as our introduction. And a number of people said, it's just so overwhelming. I don't know what to do. I just can't. I, what is something small that you can do to give you a sense of hope? Um, living in that... It, if you if you read the newspaper too often, it could give you an ulcer because there's just so much so much uh, negativity going on. But oftentimes you're able to find positivity by doing something small that helps make things better, whether uh, that's making a small donation to a food bank or perhaps it's volunteering. Um, perhaps it's helping someone learn a new thing, or maybe taking an online course. Are there small things that you can do to help? Last but not least, how do you build sustainability into all of your decisions as you're going along? I Again, small, small starts help, but 
Are you eating things that are sustainable? Are you thinking about sustainability when making decisions in the companies that you're, you're working in? Perhaps looking at waste reduction or looking at better packaging materials. Maybe uh, maybe you're in a company where you're part of the marketing and advertising team and you're, you're asking the question, are we, are we advertising aggressively towards children or are we helping families make healthy decisions? All of these are things that you can think about and If all of us have that same singular purpose, we want to see the world here for our children. We want to see it here for our grandchildren, maybe even our great-grandchildren, that seven generations thinking that we talked about. Um, If we think with that singular purpose, we're going to make better decisions together. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here and you know where to find me. I always love hearing your feedback and now I will really hear it because I've got my fancy earphones to help me hear. Um, But I always love hearing from you and I am grateful to all of you for being part of this learning journey together. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.